Okay, so as you know, about 90, more than 90% of any beehive is, 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 is female worker bees. And they, and I shit you not, they do all the work. They forage, they, they scout, they build, and they tend to the larvae in the nests. And so, and the male, male bees are called drones. They're much bigger, they're kind of rotund, they're kind of fuzzy. And their whole thing is that they sort of follow the queen around. And uh, once in their life they'll go up and they'll try to find the queen once a mate. And then they come back home. And uh, they're kind of just like, they don't really work. They're like an extra mouth to feed. And so, when winter comes around and bees have to survive, normally bees only last about six or seven weeks. Um, but they have to, they have to really, you know, struggle through winter. And one crop of bees will be born to make it through the winter. And when that time comes, genuinely, genuinely uh, all of the female uh, worker bees will pick up all the men, leave them outside the hive to die in the cold of winter. In what, in what entomologists refer to this own little microcosm of what they refer to as Mad Max. Uh, level feminism. There's second wave and there's third wave and then there's the Mad Max wave, which is uh... It's gonna take one second. Okay, so when bees are, um, okay, something about a queen. This is fascinating, right? So, when I was learning, my neighbor was showing me how to do it, and there's a, there's a guy who was like the head of the Ashford uh, Beekeeping Association. He was kind of coming out of the house during the summer of, of around 2020, 2021. And beekeepers will sometimes talk about whether they have an anxious queen or not. And obviously queens are giving off pheromones the whole time. They're giving off this, you know, we're, oh, you know what? Here's another more interesting fact. You know when people use smoke? My head's going like this. You just activated my, my BADD. Um, so, what the smoke is doing, when you see beekeepers start smoking down hives and stuff, what, it's, it's kind of to distract the bees. Bees have this instinct that when they smell smoke, it means that there might be a fire in a forest, and obviously sugar burns incredibly, incredibly fast. And so the instinct for bees is to just gorge on the honey and get, get it into themselves as quickly as they can. And sometimes, and bees can transfer obviously sugar and pollen and they can move it to another place. They often times will draw down honey from your own stock and bring it into their brood box and take it back at the end of summer if they need it. And that's just part of beekeeping. But uh, what the smoke does is, yeah, they see you messing with their hive. They're like, who the, is this? I was going to who's this guy? Let's sting the shit out of him. But if you give them smoke, they're like, actually, you know what, there's a bigger problem on our hands. This place is about to burn down, and they start eating the honey, so it's a nice little distraction. There you go. Sometimes, and this is so cool, let's say you run out, let's say your queen dies, right? Let's say and it can happen. Sometimes your queen just, just passes away. Uh, or you have an angry queen, or an anxious queen, and you kind of want to swap out that queen. What you can do is, and I shit you not, you can get a queen, put her in a sort of a, encased in a, in a ball, like a paper ball, something that other bees can chew their way through, and you plant her like a time bomb into a hive. And all of the bees are going to smell this, this sort of like, uh, this is not our queen, and they're going to go and try and kill her. But by the time that they reach her, her pheromones will have pervaded through that paper, and they will be under the kind of jurisdiction of that queen, and they get... And I, I do live in, a, in the countryside, like I keep bees. You're a beekeeper? I, I am a beekeeper, I'm of beekeeping age now. And I live in the countryside, and it's great, I keep bees. Like, the <laughs> last three years were like, you know what I mean? I, I'd go for a swim in the, in the ocean, I'd go for a swim in the sea or whatever. Check on bees once a week and hang out with friends and go for walks and stuff. I was, you know, I, yeah. So when you're not touring, I hear that you're into beekeeping. Yeah. So yeah. um, 
That is true. How did you get started? Um, it was kind of a it was a gift during the pandemic. Uh, I think it was a birthday gift. My folks gifted me a a beehive, and I uh, saw so, yeah it was kind of a surprise, total surprise, and it's it was yeah this beautiful uh, cedar hive and. Um, I I have a neighbor who keeps bees, who is uh, you know d- started keeping bees years and years ago, and h- him and his his business partner, they own a like a brewery. They grow hops and stuff like that. They um they keep bees together. So he just and he gifted me. He actually gifted me then the bees. What we call it like a nuke, which is a queen and a and a and a collection of bees that come with it, and um. Uh, and a suit and I just wa- I would watch him and a few local beekeepers and I would just watch them during the pandemic once a week we'd, we'd check it check in on some hives and you get the you get the hang of it so has your hive gotten so full that the queen pushed out another one and you went and started a new one yet we've had a few we've had a, a few attempted splits and um, you know where you you see some queen cells we had a I think we had a queen move over to another hive. We've also caught a few wild hives. So we, we had an empty hive at one point and, a, and, a, and a, a swarm just found their way naturally into it, which was super lucky. And then we've had some swarms just in the garden that we've given home to. So is hives. that your favorite part of the process? I think... I actually think the, the actual checking in on them, there's something very meditative and very zen about the actual process of, of, of opening a hive uh, which is very enjoyable um, and I have good memories of spinning the honey so myself and, and my neighbour we mm. sp- spun the honey uh, last summer, or the summer before last and um, uh, that was wonderful you know, it was a good, that was a good day it was very rewarding and, and he also owns a brewery so he had very good beer on top <laughs> of his house so we just <laughs> Mm-hmm.